Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going over three separate things. The first one being where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar's location. The next one being all of the different collection sets and their cycles for today. And then last but not least, we're going to go over the daily challenges in extensive detail so that you guys can make as much gold as possible before, well, whenever the next update actually comes to Red Dead Online. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with the first one, and that is going to be Madame Nazar's location, and she's going to be way up in Window Rock today, so this is your location that you're going to want to come to to visit her today. The quickest fast travel locations of choice will either be Valentine, which is my personal preference, or the Indian Reservation. It's kind of up to you which one you guys would prefer. Like I said, I do prefer Valentine. If that's the only thing that you guys actually came here for today, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And also, uh, a thumbs up would mean a lot to me because if it helped you out, it could potentially help out somebody else as well. And also, just on a quick side note, if you guys want to check out my live streams, I do live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The times will be set on my uh, webpage, which is gamercory.com or i do stream at other days so make sure you guys are subscribed with bell notifications turned on so that you guys can join in all those activities all right so let's go ahead and move on to the next thing on the list and the next thing on the list is actually going to be the different cycles for all of the different collection sets that are available here in red dead online now, personally, I like to start with either the coins or the lost jewelry just because you do make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time possible. But uh, it's completely up to you guys which one you guys would like to do. Uh, if you guys do the coins or the lost jewelry, you do need the field shovel and also the metal detector in order to get that completed. So if you don't have those or just a lower rank or not even a collector at all, then those might not really be an option for you. But those are going to be... The coins are going to be a part of cycle number four, and then the lost jewelry will also be a part of cycle number four. So makes it pretty easy and convenient right there. Now, these ones that I'm about to go over, you don't even have to be a collector at all. You can actually hold on to them and, until you become a collector, and then you can sell 10 sets of each of these. When you guys become a collector, you can't collect any more than that. So 10 is the most of each item. But the American Wildflowers, Tarot Cards, the Antique Alcohol Bottles, and also the Bird Eggs. The antique alcohol bottles and the bird eggs will be a part of cycle number one. Both of those will be. The tarot cards are going to be a part of cycle number five. And then the antique alcohol bottles will be a part of a cycle number six. Now, the next ones are the arrowheads and the family heirlooms. The arrows will be a part of cycle number two. And then the family heirlooms will be a part of cycle number five. So that is all the daily collection sets kind of gone over and covered. If you guys have any questions regarding any of the cycles on the collection sets and please leave a comment down below so that I can do my best to help you guys out. I can't answer a question if you guys don't leave a comment down below. Uh, if you guys are super interested, there are the hairdresser sets. They are all part of family heirlooms for today. So in my personal opinion, I would recommend just going after the complete family heirlooms. You don't even have to be a collector, like I said before, to collect these. Or I'm sorry, you do have to be a collector because some of these do require you to dig these up. It would be the other ones that I mentioned earlier. But that's going to be a part of cycle number five. So you do have to be a collector in order to participate with those. And you're at least going to need the field shovel in order to do some of those. And some of them you actually do need the metal detector in some of the cycles as well. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the daily challenges. Now, the daily challenges, in my opinion, are one of the best ways, or actually the best way of actually making gold here in Red Dead Online. There is no better other opportunity to make up to 11 gold bars every single day. If you guys were to do showdowns, it would take so many showdowns. On average, you're only making 0.16 gold per daily challenge. So you're looking at about seven or so. Uh, six, basically, per one gold bar. And each of them takes eight minutes. So you're looking at 50 minutes per gold bar. But still you can do the math. That's going to take you about 11 hours-ish or so to complete that. That's that's a lot of time and energy just to get the same amount of gold bars. Now, you don't have to obviously get all 11 gold bars. But it is a really good opportunity to make a lot of gold bars here in Red Dead. You need do need two requirements to make up to 11. You do have to have a daily cycle streak at... Or not daily cycle, but a daily challenge streak at... Um, 21 days and then you also need to be a all the different roles and be at least a rank 10 in each of those roles in order to participate in 11 gold bars because there's up to 12 daily challenges per day with 
the daily rule challenges and everybody gets the same seven daily general challenges now the reason i'm going over this information is because there are a lot of new players coming into red dead online i bet if we take a look right here i bet there's a lot of lower level people we got 12 42 42 75 17 54 there's a lot of people that are actually pretty low level um i'm actually in a Quite frankly, I'm actually kind of surprised that there's actually a lot of 200 level people in here because the last few lobbies that I've been a part of, it's been a lot of pretty much everybody below 50, to be completely honest. All right, so let's go to the daily challenges. Now, there's always one daily challenge that's super simple and it'll take you less time to complete than it does for you guys to log into Red Dead Online. So let's take a look at these together because I haven't looked at these at all and nothing has popped up for me. Uh, let's see. This one's super simple. Uh, horse appearance update, you just have to go to any of the stables, there's Valentine, there's one outside of, um, there's one in Sandini, there's one in Tumbleweed, there's one just outside of, like, Rhodes or Emerald Station, kind of like halfway between, and there's one in Blackwater as well. So lots of different opportunities that you guys can go and update your horse appearance, you just have to change, like, a mane or your tail or whatever it might be in order to get that completed. Now, Raspberry's pick, that's a pretty easy one. Sawkeye Salmon, and then obviously visiting McFarland's Ranch. If you guys really don't know where McFarland's Ranch is, I'll show you guys on the map real quick. But it's right here. There's a fast travel location to it, so you just fast travel here, and good to go. Um, I'm going to show you guys a couple different spots for raspberries. Number one is going to be right around Valentine. There's going to be one right here by the sea in Citadel Rock. There's going to be one over like in this general area. There's also one over here. And then there are a couple back here along this ridge and it kind of goes all around here but so those are the kind of the main locations um i'm trying to think if there's any down here along the river or not i can't remember off the top of my head otherwise there is a couple of spots down in the tumbleweed area or down in new austin so if you guys go to this stable to do the horse appearance updated if you guys come below the e here uh, there's about in this spot right here there's um some raspberries there's actually a raspberry bush uh at it's either this one this little dot or this dot i can't remember which one it is for sure but there's a raspberry bush there there's one like right here and believe it or not there's like two on the end there's like one there and one there just kind of look for them um you'll find them they're they're pretty close to, together in this area so a couple different spots the tumbleweed area or the valentine area it's kind of up to you which one you guys would prefer to go to all right Let's see. Sockeye, sockeye uh, Salmon, I'm going to give you guys two different locations for this. Uh, the first one being right outside of Strawberry and Valentine, kind of halfway between, but it's going to be on this bend, basically right here of the Dakota River. Or if you go way up north and up by basically um, north of Madame Nazar today, this is a gang hideout in the story mode. Um, it's a bootlegger mission in order to store more. Uh, sometimes they're getting hide out there, I guess, too. But up here, you guys can find sockeye salmon as well in the wine yard straight. It really kind of depends on which one would you guys would prefer to. Those are the most common locations. Um, preferably, I'll probably use the Dakota River because I'll probably be around Valentine picking raspberries anyway. And then that also gives me a chance to visit the stable in Valentine as well. So I can get all three of them done, like, right there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of them. Um, but we have to kill three players with a shotgun in Showdown, so make sure that you bring a shotgun with you guys today, or you can just bring your handle, like a sawed-off shotgun or something like that. Uh, then finish any Showdown in Showdown series, so this one and the shotgun one goes together. If you're not really into PvP, then this one's definitely not going to be for you guys today, but that is a gold bar that you're leaving on the table, and all you have to do is finish one Showdown. Even if you're not good at it, just finish it. And you're going to get up to a half a gold bar, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then the last one on the list is to have three player kills in posse versus. So you're going to have to basically get into a posse. Either you be the leader or somebody else be the leader and start a posse versus. So infighting and then just get three kills. And then you can do whatever you really want for the rest of the time. But just make sure that you guys each take your turn getting those three kills or wh however many people there are in the posse up to seven. And uh, just rotate and have a good time doing it. You don't get any reward for actually winning, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but everybody has a chance at getting that up to that half a gold bar. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the daily rule challenges. Now, a lot of these are actually really easy as well, but the reason I don't classify them as easy because not everybody has the exact same daily challenges that I have, especially if you're not a rank 20 in each of the roles. 
Um, if you're a lower level, you might not have these or they might be significantly different. Um, it just kind of happens. So the first one on my list is to drink your own moonshine. That's easy. As long as you have started a moonshine batch and haven't sold it, then you're going to be able to go to your bar and drink it. I pretty much only do the strong because it's obviously worth the most amount of money. We do have to make $200 money. So when you drink the own, your own strong moonshine and it is complete, then go ahead and sell it. Then you can, if, especially if you do like the special recipes, so Argarita flour, Creek plum, or the Caribbean rum, you can make up to two, you well, 247.50 would be the max as long as you keep all the bottles intact. And then you have to change the decor. You can do this one of two days, two ways. You have to go talk to Maggie. Either one, you do this. Number one, you could uh, you could change the actual main decor. That's gonna cost you gold. The cheapest one was ten gold bars. Or then you can change it back to the basic as long as you've done that. Or you can purchase like a painting in the bar itself. However, you do need to have the bar expansion in order to participate in this one. Uh, the next one is going to be the trader uh, role. The first one on our list is to have three deadly predator skins or carcasses donated to crypts. Um, now, a lot of people have actually been telling me that this one hasn't been working for them lately. I guess I haven't experienced that problem, and I'm sorry that you guys are experiencing about it. There's nothing that I can personally do, but just keep trying it. Um, that's all I guess I can say, and I'm, I do apologize once again that that's happening to you guys. Uh, but I would recommend one of two ways. Uh, deadly predators are going to be bears, alligators, um, cougars, panthers, wolves, pretty much anything that actually attacks you, except for a snake, is going to count towards that. So I would either do one of two things. Number one, I either find a pack of wolves because you're going to get three or four at a time. Or I would set up your camp in like the bayou or blue water marsh just because you're going to be close to a whole bunch of alligators and they can just go and kill one, bring it back, kill one, bring it back, kill one, bring it back, and then you're going to be good. Now the reason that I like wolves is because you can skin them. Like I said, they always come in packs of three or four. Then you can bring those back. So I'm going to show you guys a couple spots on the map that I personally like to go to. Number one is being up here in Big Valley at the Hanging Dog Ranch. Just north of this right here, right before you get into Amberino, is a spot that wolves will uh, attack you at. Uh, that's a pretty common one. That's actually where I got my one the other day. Um, there's one over by Moonstone Pond. Uh, so like in this general area right, right in here. Um, another pretty common one is... Oh, uh, over by McFarland's Ranch and a little bit to the west, like right in this general area, they'll pop up. Um, it's a, probably a little bit bigger area, but they're usually, I only am on this main road, pretty much from McFarland's Ranch down to Armadillo. Um, and that's usually where they jump me. But I can tell you the one by the Hanging Dog Ranch, which is the first location that I showed you, is pretty consistent, at least for me. So if it's not there, just ride a little bit north up to like the next gang hideout area and then turn around and then come back and then just keep doing that and eventually it will pop in i assure you of that uh, the next one is to have two goods sold to a distant buyer you just have to sell two goods it doesn't matter what it is the only problem with doing the distant one is it does take a lot of time in order to do it and number two you are a target on the map so if you're only trying to get the gold then sell it for whatever one you really want to and then do a like a local delivery for the most or do your local delivery first let yourself get two goods and then sell the distant delivery that's if you really want to participate in it. Honestly, for me, I do consider these ones a little bit more of a waste of my time just because I have a lot of gold, but it's up to you if you're really trying to get the gold. Um, I really do feel that for the next update that we do get in for Red Dead, whenever that might be, we're probably going to need close to 100 gold bars total to get a majority of the things that we're going to need for an upgrades. Um, Whatever that might be. And then the next thing I would recommend probably be anywhere between two to four thousand dollars in cash just to make sure that you're ready for whatever kind of uh hidden purchases you might need to do. Great example is look at the current rolls that we have and how expensive those things were in order to, in order to buy them. And the last one is to have a resupply mission completed with five minutes remaining. So basically do a resupply mission as quickly as you possibly can. Now the next one is going to be the collector role, which is still my favorite role, and individual sets that you have to collect. So again, arrowheads are going to be a part of cycle number two. Coins are going to be a part of cycle number four. And then the family heirlooms are going to be a part of cycle number five. So just collect any three, any three, and any three of those sets. Last but not least is going to be the bounty hunter role. It is the only role that does pay out additionally in gold. So not only can you get 11 gold bars from completing all the daily challenges, but you can get at minimum another quarter of gold bar, more likely up to another half a gold bar. Uh, just by doing the 
bounty boards, which is pretty amazing, just to complete the daily challenges. Um, now, the bottom one here, one player bounty, that one's going to be a little bit more tricky. I haven't had a legitimate one on a daily challenge day player bounty offered in a very, very long time. I did have one pop up, but I think people were doing it for each other. They were like taking turns because one popped up and then somebody immediately got it. And the next one popped up and then somebody immediately got it. And then I looked later and then eventually they're in a posse together. So they were basically taking turns, letting each other basically get that player bounty. It's kind of a good method. I like that. So that is a way to do it. If you got a friend that would be willing to do that, just make sure that your friend gets you uh, collected as soon as possible before anybody else comes after you. Uh, the next one is to have two bounty targets taken down with bullets. I love the bullets. Make sure you guys have them if you're part of being a bounty hunter. The next other thing that you're going to want is make sure you have the reinforced lasso. Bullets and reinforced lasso must have for a bounty hunter role. And then three or more bounty targets brought in at once. I have a friend help you with this, and that's the easiest way. Or you can bring your bounty wagon. That's kind of up to you. Or the other option is to kill both targets, put one on the back of your horse, and then drag the other one back. Those are your main options that you have in order to get it completed. But if you guys do have any questions regarding any of the stuff that we went over today, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And like I said earlier, a thumbs up does mean a lot to me because if it helped you out, it could help out somebody else as well. But that is all the time that I have for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, you know what to do. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, day gaming.